These were recorded at Mark chapter 5, starting at verse number 1. When they came over unto the other side of the sea, in the country of Gadarenes, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tomb, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling amongst the tomb, and no man could bind him, no not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters or shackles and chains. And the chain had been plucked asunder by him, and the shackle broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tomb, crying and cutting himself with stone. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried in a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he had said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. He asked him, What is thy name? He answered and said, My name is Legion, for we are many. He besought him much that he should not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devil besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into him. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirit went out, entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea. There was about 2,000, and they were choked or drowned in the sea. Amen. Just for a little while this morning, the time that I want to preach from this topic, come out of the graveyard. Come out of the graveyard. The graveyard is a place for burying. And this man made his home living in the tomb. This morning we look at another man, another individual that Jesus healed. The crazy possessed man that lived amongst the tomb. He lived in the graveyard. My, my, my. And, and, and let us, we're just going to live for a, 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 a few points this morning as we tell the story about the man who met the master, the maneuvering, the multitude, and then from maniac to missionary, the man, the master, maneuvering the multitude, and then from maniac to missionary. My, my, my. The man goes off, thought, starts in verse 2. And when Jesus was came out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. All right. This man was demon possessed. By unclean spirit of demon. All right. Look at, uh, and under the man, we're going to look at the, the catacomb, the curse, uh, constraint, and control, civilized, and crime. The cata catatomb. He lived in the tomb. He lived in the graveyard. The tomb at that time was cave. When the dead body, where the dead body was stored, wow, they deteriorated and rotted and the flesh fell from the bone. Many of us live in a place that are full of dead bodies. We go all the time to plays full of dead body. To the club, to the joke joints and dope dens and dope houses. And hanging out with street gang, the game. We need to come out of the graveyard. This man was cursed and consumed. 
this wild maniac man was possessed with unclean spirits. He was demon possessed. Now, like this man, if we do not accept Christ as our Lord and our Savior, then we are controlled by the devil. Yes, constraints and chain did no good. This wild, possessed man could not be bound with chain, with handcuffs, or with shackle. He would break them with his supernatural demonic strength. Mm, mm, mm. And he could not be controlled, and he could not be tamed. No one was able to control or tame this wild, possessed maniac. Many people were... Many folks today are out of control because they are possessed and live in the graveyards of society. My, my, my. Well, you can't live among civilized folks because of our behavior, because of his behavior. Could, couldn't live among civilized folk, so he had to make his dwelling in the tombs and in the graveyard. And he displayed chaotic behavior. Uh, Kenesha, he was cutting and crying. Always day and night, he was in the mountains, in the graveyard. He was crying and cutting himself with rocks and howling like wolves and yelling and screaming all night long. And the town folk were scared of this crazy man we exhibit and like us when we exhibit our harmful behavior then we got to go and cry about it and yeah we cut ourselves with alcohol cut ourselves with drugs and running around acting crazy and then we yell and cry about it well that was the man the de demonic possessed man living in the graveyard and he need to come out the graveyard. We need to come out the graveyard and come in amongst the living. Well, that was the man. Now let's look at the master. Verse 6 says, But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. My, my, my. Well, let's look at the master. He was recognized. Yes, the demon-possessed man, and this wild man, recognized Jesus and knew who he was. You see, the devil knows who Jesus is. How about you? And they asked the disciples, do you know who I am? Well, James 2 and 19 said the devil also believed and he trembled. Devil recognized Jesus and know who he is. And not only did he recognize Jesus, he ran and he reverenced this wild man, this demon possessed man, this maniac, this crazy man ran to Jesus and fell down. And worship him. You see the devil. Know who Jesus is. And they recognize him. And his authority. Yeah Philippians said. At the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue. Shall confess. Even the devil bow. And confess before Jesus. How about you. Well, and then finally, this man, well, he had a request of the master. Yeah, he cried with a loud voice on him. What have I to do with you, most high son of the most high God? I adjure do I thee, I beg thee, that thou torment me not. Look at this. This demon fully understood who Jesus was and begged him not to torture him. 
the demon begging Jesus not to touch at him. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that ironic that this demon that had been torturing this man, Rosemary uh, Hip and Steel, God bless you, and, and this demon possessed, they've been torturing this man and torturing the village people. Is he begging Jesus, don't torture me? <clears throat> people that show no mercy to others want mercy for themselves. But but Matthew 5 and 7 said in the Beatitude, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. If you want to be friendly, then you got to show yourself friendly. If you want to obtain mercy, then you have got to show mercy to others. And then Jesus gave him the requirement. <clears throat> After he had been begging and pleading about mercy, Jesus gave him the requirement and order. Verse 8, for he said unto him, come out of that man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus is trying to clean us up just like he cleaned up the wild man. But we are comfortable with our spirits. We are comfortable with our drinking. We comfortable with our drug. We comfortable with our attitude. And we don't want to be clean up. But Jesus told the spirit, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Well, we looked at the man, looked at the master. Now we're going to look at the maneuvering. Yeah, that the demons tried. Yeah, Jesus told him, come out of him. He said, I know you. You see the demon kill shape. Uh, uh, the demon tried to maneuver his way out of a bad situation. Many of us try to bargain and, and maneuver our way out of things. Lord, we said, if you get me out of this predicament, I praise your name. Lord, if you just raise me up off of this sick bed, then I will knock the hinges off the door, knock running the church house. My, my, my. And when God heal you, you ain't nowhere to be seen. We need to come out of the graveyard where Jesus asked for a few things. All right, doing this maneuvering, this back and forth, this conversation between Jesus and the demon-possessed man. He was actually talking to the demon. First, he asked for identification. He said, identify yourself. What is your name? And the demon answer said, my name is Legion. For we are many. Well, this man, he was possessed by many, many demons. A legion is a military unit of some 6,000 soldiers. This man had so many demons in him that they called him legion. Whether he had 6,000 or whether he had a lot. They call him Legion. This lets us know that, folks, we don't have a problem. We have problem. And many of us have many, many problems. Yeah, no problem, problem. Yeah, and we have Legion, lots of problem. Well, we looked at his identity. And now we look at the opportunity. Opportunity means to beg for something urgently or persistent. In other words, he kept on begging. He kept on pleading with Jesus. Don't torture me. My, leave me alone. Another version says, not my time. It's not time for me to go to a bit. Brother Hardrick, God bless you. And, and so he begged, kept begging, and kept pleading. And well, 
we found out that near near the place near the tomb was a large herd of swine a large herd of hawks about two thousand and he begged him they begged him that they should be allowed to enter into the swine and don't send them away don't send them to hell well they kept on begging so jesus indulged them indulging mean to allow a, a tolerant a cater to someone mood or when in other words they begged so much yeah that jesus granted their request i'm not gonna send you out of the country i'm gonna send you into the herd of swine yeah and then when they when the demons entered the hall, there was emerging to submerge in liquid. The hog said, I'd rather die than be under demon possessed. They had more sin than a whole lot of folk. They ran down the hill into the sea. You see anything Satan enter, he drive them crazy. Demon drove the man crazy demon drove the hogs crazy and the demon would drive you crazy my 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 well we looked at the man he was demon possessed he was crying and cutting we looked at the master he recognized the master he ran and reverenced the master we looked at the maneuvering trying to uh, 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 finagle his way out of his judgment. Now, we're going to look at the mother too. And when they thought in verse 14, when they that fed the swine, they fled and they told it in the city and they told it in the country and they in the town folk Everybody came out to see what had been done. You see, those that tended the hall reported to the town folks and they reported to the country folks. They ran and tell it. So many folks are quick to run tell it. And the thing you ought to be run telling, we don't tell. We don't tell that Jesus just healed a lunatic. He just drove out demons out of the wild man. We ran and tell things that should not be told. They should have told that Jesus had healed the crazy man. And the folks came to investigate. Look at what they witnessed. Look at what they wanted. And look at their wrecked economy. Well, they look at the witness, what they saw. And when they got out to where the tomb were, they got out to the graveyard. They come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. And see him that it had the legion. And see this crazy man. He was sitting at the feet of Jesus. He was clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. Isn't that funny? Isn't that ironic? Isn't that crazy? When they saw the wild man, when they saw the lunatic sitting at the feet of Jesus, he was in his right mind. The people became afraid. My, 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 they were more afraid of him sitting at the feet of Jesus than they were of him running and howling in the tomb. Well, there's a lesson in that. When you give your life to Christ, folk, folk get scared of you. You see, the power of Christ was running through this mind. He didn't have a legion. He didn't have a lunatic. He had the power of Christ 
in his spirit. He was clothed in his right mind because the like mind that was in Christ Jesus was now in this man. See, folk get scared of you when you come to Jesus. They know you got the power that, that's in Christ Jesus. Well, that's what they witnessed. This man in his right mind. Well, what did they want? They began to pray unto him. They began to plead with Jesus. They began to demand with Jesus. Depart out of our coat. Get out of town. Instead of them, instead of them embracing Jesus, they ran him out of town. They started demanding that he leave his city and go, well, just go away. Understand this, that Jesus not going to stay where he is not wanted. And that's a lesson for us. Don't stay where you're not wanted, whether it's in the home or on the job. Don't stay where you're not wanted. Grandma, grandpa, mama, daddy should have taught you that lesson. You see, they were looking at the wrecked economy. Yeah, when the demons entered the hall, when they entered the swine, it wrecked the economy. When they ran down the sea and drowned, it wrecked the local economy. Let's do a little swine math. There was 2,000 head of hog. That mean there was 8,000 ham hocks. There was 8,000 pig feet. There was 4,000 slabs of bacon. There was 4,000 slabs of rib. There was 4,000 ham, 4,000 shoulder, 4,000 pig ears. And there was about 10 dump trucks full of chitlin, hog maw, steaks, and other pork products. It put them out of business. I'm here to tell you that God will shut you down. He'll put you out of business. You see, they, the multitude, was not serving the true and the living God. And my God put them out of business. He shut them down. He shut down their hawks. And they, when they drowned it in the sea. I'm here to tell you, if you don't serve God, if you don't acknowledge God as your Lord, if you don't acknowledge Him as your Savior, He'll shut you down. Come here, COVID, and witness for me. Yeah, we were not serving God in spirit and in truth. And God shut us down. We wouldn't worship him in the school. COVID shut, shut the school down. We wasn't worshiping God in the church house. God sent COVID and shut the church down. And I'm here to tell you, if you don't worship God, as you don't serve him in spirit and in truth, he'll shut you down. He'll put you out of business. Jesus didn't stay where he not wanted. You got to bleed in your heart. You got to confess with your mouth. You got to want Jesus in your heart. Call him your Lord and your Savior. And when they got to the boat, this man, this wild man, this crazy man, this possessed man, this man went from maniac to missionary. The man that had been possessed wanted to go with Jesus. But Jesus, Brother Curly, denied his request. Yeah, verse 18 tell us when Jesus got to the ship. Yeah, the wild man that had been possessed with the devil 
pray. Say, Lord, let me go with you. Yeah, he said, I don't want to be here anymore. They still going to be scared of me. They going to think I'm crazy. Let me go with you, Lord. I need a fresh start. How be it? Jesus denied him. He wouldn't let him go. He suffered not. Jesus said unto him, go home to your friend. Go home to your family and tell them how great thing the Lord has done for you and had compassion on me and he healed my mind. You see, I was sick in the mind. I was demon possessed, but my God cast out the demon and I'm clothed in my right mind and I'm worshiping my God in spirit and in truth. And the wild man wasn't wild anymore. He went from maniac to missionary. He departed. He began to tell the story in the copper list. What a great man that Jesus was. And he told them the great thing that Jesus had done. And everybody began to marvel at this man that once was a maniac, but now was a missionary. He was telling the story. And I'm here to tell you that once Jesus healed you, yeah, Old things are passed away. Behold, all things new. This man said, I used to be a maniac. I used to be a wild man. I used to live in the graveyard. But I came out of the cemetery. I came out of the tomb. I came out of the graveyard. And you need to come out of the graveyard. And you can only do that when Jesus healed you and clothed you in your right mind. Yeah, we were a sinner, but the master of the sea, he touched me and he made me whole. He chased the demons away and I'm clothed in my right mind. I went from madman to missionary. And you can do the same thing. Once Jesus get a hold of you, you tell the story of how you made it over. You see so many things we don't understand now. But after a while, by and by, when the morning come, we'll understand it better by and by. Jesus cast out the evil spirit. He healed the madman living in the graveyard. And he'll do the same for you. Do you know him? He water in dry places. He's bread in a starving land. He's Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. He went to the hill called Calvary where they hung him high where they stretched him wide. He hung his head and he died. They took him down, put him in the grave, but the grave couldn't hold him. Early, early the third day, he got up with all power in his hand. He caught the cloud escalator and went on home. But one day he's coming back for his trade without spot, or without rancor, and we going home to forever be with the Lord. Amen. 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 The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And amen.